mega lashes, mega blue eyeshadow. I mean, this is the look. I mean, what else do you want? I'm going to pull up some images and we're going to have a look at the process of how Liza became Cabaret Liza and how that completely just launched her into the stratosphere of just being a star because really when you look like this you should be a star basically so let's have a look the not the original character but Cabaret was a Broadway show way before it was a movie from 1966 to 1968 Kelly Hunter played Sally Bowles and this was her character so black and white it's very intense it's hard to say if there was any color but it's very co comparable to Liza Minnelli. Now, what I want to have a look now is the period. So it's shot in the 1930s. Well, I mean, it's supposed to be in the 1930s, not shot in the 1930s. It was shot in 1971 or 70. And I wanted to have a look at the characters in movies or the actresses in movies. So here are the usual suspects. Greta Garbo, Loretta Young, Betty Davis, Joan Crawford. I mean, if we look at Sally Bowles and we look at them, I mean, <laughs> if we compare. So if we compare, we are not at all close. And I was thinking, is this a fluke? Because when you make a movie in a different time period from the one that you're in, you have to make it appealing to the people who want to see it. So it has it has to sort of connect to them in a way through the appearance of the characters. I remembered there is a thing called the Flapper Girl. And so if we bring up Louise Brooks right here, right now, I mean, bingo. I mean, Louise Brooks, Liza Minnelli as Sally Bowles. And there you go. And I also want to bring up Josephine Baker. She was big back then, huge. She's an American girl who went to Paris and became the most talented, the most well-loved showgirl in Paris. And if you want to have a look at her banana dance and other things, well, you can't have a look at it. But, I mean, she was fantastic, amazing. So both of these girls are really wild and crazy, and I think it connects really well with the character of Sally Bowles. And the, the flappers are quite an original creation. These kinds of girls didn't really exist before because, I mean, things changed. There was the Victorian era right before, and then women got their votes, and a lot of women were tired of being homemakers. A time when jazz arrived as well, and jazz and, and the cities were full of people, and people wanted to have fun, and this was a way to have fun, and this is pre-pill, of course. So these girls were wild, crazy, with abandon, dancing away to Charleston until like 3 in the morning. Of course, it wasn't every woman on the street. This was the cool girl, the it girl, you know, the Miley Cyrus. But I digress. So let's have a look at Liza. She's really important in this. And this is 1967. This is the first time that I can spot her having her hair so short and the look. 1968, 1969. So these are all screenshots from YouTube. And no one styled her. She was already marketing herself this way. And nothing really has changed in the movie except blue eyeshadow, a new hairdo, thin br eyebrows, and, you know, a bit of rouge. And that's it. I mean, she's Sally Bowles all of a sudden. And I think that's what's brilliant about the character and how everything flows together in cabaret because it's really one of those times when an actress becomes her character or the other way around the character becomes the actress and you believe it and i want to have a little time loop here and it's really really interesting in terms of history and how everything is sort of connected back and forth so let's go back to twiggy beginning of the 60s i mean she had this look pretty much all through the 60s by mid-60s, Liza adopts this look. So that means it's become really popular, enough for her to be cool to wear this kind of thing. And it suits her really well, actually, way more than the long hair she had before, which I'll put a picture here. What happens is this twingy look comes from the 1930s. Now, it's kind of controversial. Maybe not. I don't know. 
So I'll bring up Greta Garbo, just the eye, Twinkie's eye, just the eye, and you can decide. And basically what happens is as the movie comes in in the early 70s, there's still this 60s Twinkie's look that continues on. And Twinkie herself abandoned this look in 1969. Here's a picture of her in 1969, completely different girl. So this is what's interesting about how everything flows in together and what makes this really, really a magical moment in movies and also crystallizes Liza as a star. And that's absolutely fantastic. Now, as a note, I wanted to add, they relaunched Cabaret and the actress that played her, I'm sorry, I forget her name, I'll just put it on the screen. They put her out on stage as a blonde and in the original notes in Wikipedia, they said they tried it as a blonde, Sally Bowles, but it didn't work and they gave her black hair. And what happened? Well, I don't know if it's the singing, I don't know, but Emma Stone as a redhead with the 1930s woman starlight look totally works because there's something dark about the character also and Liza with bubbling personality that just makes her Sally Bowles you believe in the Sally Bowles it's or in Liza but it doesn't matter you believe this character it's so real so authentic and that's why I think whoever goes on stage dressed like this I mean they better pray to God that they have the talent that Liza has because they're going to be compared to her and I don't blame Emma Stone for not putting on this look because there's only one Liza well maybe not now <laughs> no sorry Liza I'm not going to steal your look it's just I'm just fanning so if you stay tuned I'm going to show you the makeup with my blonde hair and you'll see it's a completely different thing and it's fabulous and at the end there'll be my little ditty so see you so the makeup might look a little bit different because I've improved a few things, but essentially this is the makeup and with the blonde hair, it's completely different. And as you can see from one eye to the other, <laughs> it's a huge, huge change in the eye shape. And basically that's why this makeup can be really beautiful. Of course, if you have really small eyes, this might not be for you. If you have Asian eyes, you can definitely do this. Um, just put the crease because of an Asian eye or a hooded eye, as long as you have a lot of space or relative amount of space, you can cheat the crease. You can paint it onto your skin and you can have this effect. The crease and all of the line work just makes the eye explode and is gorgeous. Now, I wanted to say a few things. These are really big lashes. You don't need to have these big lashes and it's best not to trim down a really big lash like this because it's going to look weird. I recommend velour lashes. I've seen them in Sephora. I haven't bought them or used them, but I've seen that they have like really intense spikes and, and fluttery things like this. It's all about proportion for the lash. That's the only thing I'm going to say. I can't tell you what to do for your eyes because every eye is different. But you always have to think of the general idea of, of being rounded and fluttery. That's really important. For my foundation and the eye look, this is a mix that I made to blend the crease. These are the other products that I've used. You can sort of see the similarity of it. This is what I blended with some white to correct any shapes or to pat on top of this eyeshadow. This eyeshadow is really powdery. But what I like about it is it sort of fades into the skin, into the sort of grayish tone. I don't know how to explain it. You have to, if you have it, you can use it. Um, even on prime lids, it kind of bumps down. It's uh, Anya by Illamasqua. So this shadow is the shadow that I applied first. Then I didn't apply fully all over. I did a crease. And then with the cream, I corrected the crease and shaped it and re-blended it. As you can see, it's fairly blended, but it's not overly blended. It all depends on your preference. But if you make it more solid, it's more of a 1960s look. Before I put in the blue, because once I put in the blue, the blue will flatten out the area. If you've never done this before, I would actually practice putting it in 
without a base because I have a base on my eye right now, which is also helping to flatten out the eye. Essentially, I'm just going to re scan the area, remember <laughs> it, and then I'm just going to put most of the product here. And here I'm dipping in. So that's why I mixed a cream because you can go back and reshape it. I'm going to just start applying it everywhere and then you can bump it up. But like I say, it, it has sort of a grayish powdery quality to it compared to this one. And that's again why I mixed a cream product so I can bump up the saturation of certain areas. And I'm going to avoid the crease just because I don't want any white in there. There's a white powder base in this. I want to keep as much impact as I can on the crease area. If you want to simplify this look and really bring it down, it would be to use cream eyeshadow. So something like a flash palette by Makeup Forever or Paint Pot Creams from MAC. I think they have some. And they have also the cream sticks that I showed you. That one doesn't set. This is a very difficult look. It's a very simple look, but it's very difficult to get every detail right. So this is what it should look like before you put on any lashes. So notice how it's round around my eyes and at the outside it dips downward and connects. So I'm, this is my eye, of course. So your eye is going to be different. Maybe you have really upturned eyes and it, this might not work for you. You have to evaluate and examine and how you're going to translate that onto your face. And that's what makeup is, is taking something and transferring it onto someone else's face. I just wanted to make a note in the video. I didn't put black eyeshadow. I didn't put black eyebrows because I would have to cover mine up and mine and black aren't very 1930s themselves. And this look is very 1930s and then 1970s. So I wanted to keep more of a 1970s since I look more 1970s than 1930s. And the brows would have made it a bit more drag queenish. So I decided not to go that way and just keep the brow more 1970s, which is not correct. But this makeup is not period correct at all. <laughs> not at all. But it's like halfway there and halfway in the 1970s. So I really want you to have a look at it before the lashes are on. And when the lashes are on, it just looks like a shadow behind the lashes. Now mine, again, the black space, the black liner is very thick. And that's because the, the space on the lid is really big and the lashes are really big. And that's something that I've learned. The bigger the lashes, the more you have to put something on the lid, like a liner or something smoky or a shadow, or else it just makes the lashes look really wonky or crazy. And the more I do it, the better I get at it. And that's just how it is. You know, it, it's hard to get this one really perfect because it's a lot of blending to get it right. So it's a good look to learn to increase your blending skills. And you got to repeat, 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 repeat until you get it. Oh my God. And I'm going to try it another time with just cream products to see how I can get the same look quicker because with the powders and everything, it took longer to blend, but I think it's more beautiful. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. There's jazz everywhere, booze everywhere, life everywhere, joy everywhere. Nowadays,